products born through a convenient media. This is a most unusual result. But I believe students in Umayyadapuram College here can easily solve such problems using computers and more importantly they can write the programs and they can develop the software to do studies on chemical reactive intermediates, transition states, etc. This is the main message from part one of my talk. But I am a bit uh, surprised that no student takes courage to come up and comment on it. Somebody? Okay, then I'm going to switch to my second part of the talk. Okay? Is this a disease of old age? It was considered to be a disease of old age. Young people, young children are getting cataract. The lens gets blurred. The lens becomes opaque. The person cannot see. The person becomes blind. And the power again. What is the reason that cataract develops? What is the role of software, bioinformatics tools to study this? That is the question I asked this morning. Question Purdida. Bioinformatics tool, cataract tool, in a samadham. Bioinformatics, cataract, how it develops. Kanini muli ma. So, you should kanini muli ma. Can we find out? That's what I'm going to tell you in this part of the talk. Are you ready for it? But generally, I do not like to proceed unless there is some participation from the audience. And this audience thus far has refused to participate. Help me. Get them to participate. Tell me. The operation is done. In less than two hours, the patient is allowed to go home. They are asked to put some drops to keep infections away. After some time, they are called back again. The power of their eye is checked with the new lens which is put inside and the power is adjusted, they are given reading glasses, even all the patients recover very quickly within a few days. That has not widened, come after three months. By that time, with partial eyesight, the old person has a fall, either has broken a bone, or sometimes, unfortunately, the old person meets with a road accident or something and dies. Can we do something without doing an operation? And in India, people are very afraid of surgery. And sometimes, in some cases, surgery fails. And eyesight is lost. I told you, our eye lines the protein inside the eye is 100% transparent. Some processes like oxidation, formylation, dehydration, fragmentation, misfolding, aggregation make these proteins higher molecular weight, they become translucent and they finally become opaque. As this happens, the eyesight blurs and the patient develops cataract and eventually can go blind. Bioelectrophoresis. This is an STS paid electrophoresis of the protein inside the human eye called alpha A crystalline. This molecular weight is 19 kg, meaning there 
my molecular grade is 19,000. This is a ladder to check that we are checking the right protein. That happens to be the sequence, the primary structure of the protein. First amino acid present is methionine. M stands for methionine. This protein has a chaperoning role that makes any protein that is its conformation has been somewhat disturbed. Alpha A crystalline holds the protein till such time the protein can go back to its original conformation. So the role is known as chaperonic role. This is a very important amino acid because very often this amino acid will undergo unwanted oxidation inside the human eye. Next slide. The proteins which are water insoluble, I told you the protein alpha A crystalline is water soluble. But as we grow older, the protein becomes water insoluble. How many numbers of proteins water insoluble are shown in a 25 year old person? Five proteins. As the person has become 41 year old, what is the number? After 16 proteins have become insoluble. In one study a patient whose age is 65, also to age is 75, the number of proteins that are present inside the eye, which are water insoluble, increase tremendously. When this increase happens, they start joining totally opaque and you can't see. Can you believe that inside some patients, in their eyes, hydrogen peroxide gets produced? Hydrogen peroxide is produced inside the human eye in some cases. And you know, hydrogen peroxide is so, so very corrosive. And if it's produced inside the human eye, it can oxidize alpha crystalline leads to cataractogenesis that means origin of cataract. In 2013, in the journal called PLOS One, Krishna Sharma and his group, the University of Missouri, the United States of America, all these people are obviously of Indian origin. They study subunit subunit interactions between alpha A wild type crystalline, that means a native, the alpha A crystalline, which is from a normal person. And they also study alpha A crystalline from a mutant. Variety. That means where one mutation had taken place and this led to cataract in that particular person of the family. The change is replaced by arginine in the crystalline in the case of the patient. What Krishna Sharma's group did is, next slide, they used the new method of chemical cross linking. This is called the ladder, so that we know what the molecular weight we are studying. That is the mutant protein, this is the native protein. This, 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 all these bands, all these bands are, I'll hit just a little quickly. These are all the bands of alpha A crystalline. But if you see, when there is no cross linker, negative means no cross linker, positive means there is a cross linker, 
It's in addition to 19 kD, there is a dimer, a trimer, and so on. But in the case of a patient, a congenital cataract, there are hardly any bands here or here, but there is a band right to the top. What does it mean? It means the molecular way of weight of alpha A crystalline has suddenly increased tremendously. And the molecular weight increases so much, its water solubility will go down, it will tend to form aggregates. If aggregates are formed inside the human eye, it will lead to less toxicity, I mean less visibility. So what is the suggestion? The suggestion is that can we prevent this from happening? We don't want high molecular weight aggregates being formed inside the human eye. We don't want this to be formed either by age or by oxidation or by any such means. Remember, this particular case refers to when cousins are marrying each other. This is congenital cataract observed when cousins, close relations, marry each other. The probability of such a problem arising in such a marriage is much higher. The whole analysis was done using mass spectrometry. The mass spectrum is recorded in an ESI mass spectral instrument. The entire data generated is to be converted into a dot NTF file. Very large file. And you need for that so-called FASTA sequence to be downloaded from the internet. Faster sequence of the protein alpha A crystalline inside the human island. But the entire data from mass spectrometry after trips in digestion following SDS page, etc., as I showed you earlier, the dynamic bands, so on, being cut, being subjected to trips in digestion, then subjected to mass spectrometry, ESI, electron spray induced mass spectrometry. And then the Danton MS data be recorded. The entire data be converted into one single file called the dot .ngf file. In Krishna Sharma's case, this is the number of interactions that could be happening determined by a software called GPMAW. GPMAW software told what are the possible interactions that can happen. And they showed there was one major difference between the native protein in a normal human being and the same protein, mutant protein, in the case of a patient. Just one change of amino acid led to one change in interaction pattern. So the mutant protein became highly prone to aggregation. Therefore, it can become more and more insoluble. The chances are it will lead to blindness. It will lead to cataract and eventually blindness. Next slide. Can cataract be delayed or reversed? This is a result that we have got from China. This is one patient. This is another patient. Remember the number 41 and remember the number 43. In a given family, two patients were chosen for this analysis. 
and their genetic mapping. This male married this female. They had the gentleman here. I'm sorry, this is the first marriage. The first marriage, this boy married this girl, and this boy married that girl. In the next generation, there is a mutation at 588 position. This is a man between cousins. What is the relation between this male and this male? They are, they are. I hope you understand. They are related to each other. So look. From this marriage, there are two sons. This is a marriage between cousins. Up to this stage, there is no problem. But in the next generation, fourth generation, three children are right. That means this was a homozygous case, recessive. This could have been prevented. If this marriage had not taken place, the red double line means marriage between cousins, consanguineous marriages. And they are very common in India, in many parts of India. Why do they marry each other? Because they don't want the pro property to be distributed to some other family. They want to keep the property within the family. But they don't understand that three of their children in the next generation may become blind. Go back, please. This is patient 4 1. This is patient 4 3. Go on. This is patient 4 1. This is patient 4 3. Both are blind. Why are they blind? They became blind because cousins married each other. Terrible. The young people are given no choice. Unfortunate. They analyze their genes, the genetic analysis in this family, and they show that one base, thymine, is replaced by cytosine. One change in the base pair. Therefore, one change in the amino acid. And what happened? The person became blind. The family, the children, the fourth generation, three of them are blind. Very interestingly, the genes which are responsible for this particular material to be formed are common between humans, dogs and rabbits. There is a great homology between dogs, rabbits, and human beings. 2015, in the journal Nature, Chinese scientists have shown that this particular gene is responsible for the synthesis of a precursor of cholesterol. The precursor of cholesterol is called lanosterol. And lanosterol has this structure here. This is a precursor of cholesterol in the human body. So that gene was responsible for the enzyme lanosterol synthase, which converts this squalene 2 3 epoxide into lanosterol in the human body. There was one change here, there was one change here, one mutation here, highly conserved region for lanosterol synthase leads to increased aggregation of the mutant protein. They apply lanosterol on dogs and rabbits. The cataract lenses. Next slide. I hope you can recognize the eye of a dog. 
with complete character. Score 1. This, on application of Lannister all, the cataract disappeared. That is the eye of a rabbit with cataract. When they applied Lannister all, score 2 became score 0, the rabbit's cataract disappeared. Go back to one side. Since there is a great homology between dogs, rabbits and man, the question I ask is, can this be extended to human beings? If this is true, we can treat patients who are developing cataract and do this without surgery. Many, many people think this result from China in 2015 is indeed a great development. It is certainly possible to consider the use of not only lanosterol but also other phytochemicals from plants and I dare say such knowledge exists in India. There are certain Ayurvedic hospitals like the hospital called Sridhariyam near Kotev. The doctor even comes to other major towns like Chennai, New Delhi and so on. There are patients whom I have met, they say by being treated with plant extracts, their cataract has been delayed, if not reversed, if not completely cured. So, for this very young audience, I want to put up the hypothesis that this is very much an open question. I mentioned, I will just briefly touch upon Schrodinger software. We can run through the next slides. This is the sequence that I mentioned to you. Studies on protein-protein interaction using cross-linkers, mass spectrometry and bioinformatic software. Go on. Go on. You get such reports. Mascot analysis tells you which protein you are doing dealing with. This is a software available with the mass spectrometer and it will tell you which protein you are dealing with. All this data is about mass with intensity. Mass with intensity. Go ahead. From the mass spectrometer. This software, Star Row X, is freely available from the man who wrote this particular software. His name is Star Row X. Mikhail Rothschild from Andrea Sitz lab in Halle an der Saale in Germany has developed this and is prepared to send it to anybody free of cost. The mass spectral data is analyzed by this particular software for studying protein-protein interactions between, for example, how does alpha A crystalline dimerize or aggregate? What is the difference between the wild type, that is the normal person's protein, and the patient's protein? Yes. The B and Y ions can be characterized. The computer gives you this print, annotates this, and tells you whether your result is good or bad. You get in the final analysis, a dead boy analysis, which is printed by the computer. If we have more such blue times, pillars, in the Deploy analysis, then your study is more successful. That means you get more and more links between the protein sites within the same protein which are going to interact with each other, possibly leading to dimerization. At this moment, I like to pause. Hold on, go back. At this moment, no, go back. At this moment, I like to pause for a minute. I gave you a title. 
bioinformatics tools, bioinformatics tools, sky is not the limit. What I mean by that is, the softwares like Gaussian 09, Schrodinger, are available to us at reasonably, rather high price, not reasonably, at a very high price. Can our students not write the programs? Can our students not develop the software? Can our students not study reactions of the unusual variety that I highlighted for the preparation of Vishwamayi? Can our students not develop software with the help of teachers? Make in India. That's the slogan of the day. Make in India. Can't we make these softwares in India and use them to study diseases like cataract, its origin, cataractogenesis, or for that matter, can we not study what are the kind of interactions that are taking place in the protein inside the human island? Can we not reach the stage where we can delay cataract? Can we not reach the stage when we can reverse cataract? Whatever, whatever I have said this morning is also equally applicable to many other major diseases like